Hello everyone, let's continue with the worksheet on work and energy. I'm now at um, the part on energy part 1 and question 10. These are all calculation questions and so do remember to for each uh, for each calculation question to please remember to state your un uh, formula, show the substitution and finally give your answer to the correct units. For all the questions that you need the value of G, gravitational field strength, uh, it is 10 newtons per kilogram because we assume that all these uh, questions are going to take place on Earth. So let's begin. Question 10. The mass of a bag is given. It is lifted 0 0.2 meters uh, vertically upwards and the question asks for GPE. So write out the formula for gravitational potential energy. Substitute the values. Remember mass in this case, has to be in kilograms. So if the question gives you the mass in uh, grams, you need to do a conversion. And also just a reminder that height has to be in meters. Again, if it's given in cm, you need to do conversion. But for question 10, there's no need for any conversion because um, all the correct units are given. So just substitute and you get 4.4 joules. Question 11. This is a fan. Now, what a fan does is that um, when you supply them with electrical energy, it will use this energy and the motor will then turn the blade and you will have uh, kinetic energy because the, the blades are moving. So it says that you will have 360 joules of kinetic energy produced by this fan uh, converted from the electrical energy. And of course, during this spinning and so on, the motor may get hot. So you get 100 joules of um, heat produced as well. So the question says that some sound is also being produced. So there is one more here that says sound, but we do not know what is the value of this amount. And the question asks you to calculate the amount of sound energy. Now you need to know uh, the principles of conservation of energy. What it basically says is that energy cannot be created or destroyed but you can convert it from one form to another. And because energy cannot be created or destroyed, when you give the fan 500 joules of energy, then 500 joules of energy should come out from this fan because the energy cannot be created or destroyed. But that we can only see 100 plus 360, so 460 joules. So therefore, the remaining 40 joules comes uh, is actually... From the, fan, uh, from the sound of the fan. Okay, so that's how we do it. Energy input equals to energy output, same value because energy cannot be created or destroyed. And then you, sub, uh, you subtract and you will get 40 joules as the energy, um, the sound energy. Let's move on. Question 12 require you to um, do a calculation on kinetic energy and they have given you the mass and the speed. I just want to remind uh, you again that this formula for to calculate kinetic energy, there is also there is always um there are always students who use it wrongly. Now, very very importantly is this square over here. Please take note that you square only you square the speed. Now V stands for speed. Okay, V stands for the speed. M is the mass. Again, this is in kilograms. This is in meters per second. And the square refers to the square of the speed. So please do not square this whole thing here. Right? You only square the speed. So for question 12, the mass is 900. Um, the speed is 20. And then 20 square. So, so 20 times 20. Alright? So press your calculator carefully. And you should get 180,000 joules. To note that um, 1, 000, every 1,000 is 1 kilo joules. So, 1, 000, so 180,000 joules is 180 kilo joules. So each time you do a conversion, actually all you need to remember is every time you see three zeros here, you can replace it with a kilo, right? So for example, you have 25,000 uh, joules of energy. So these three zeros, you replace with kilo. So it will be 25 kilojoules. Okay, 
So that's how you can do conversion uh, quite easily. Let's move on to question 13. Um, question 13, the speed is now with this formula, if all the values are given except for one, then you can actually find the value for that missing uh, quantity. So in this case, kinetic energy is given, the speed is given, so you can then find the mass. And the formula is still the same. Ke is half mv squared. The second step is still the same. You have to do substitution. And then after that, you bring the mass over that side. So if you want, maybe I just do a, so 120. So then you divide, you bring a half over, divide by half. All right. And then after that, you also divide by 40 square equals to m. And that's how you get 0 0.15 kilogram. Be very careful when you shift things around. Question 14. Um, question 14 is a question on gravitational potential energy and you are required to calculate the mass. So again, step one, I'll write down the formula for GPE, substitute what I know, but I do not know the mass. So then it will be 0 0.6 divided by 10 times 2. So I'll get 0 0.03 as the answer. Let's take a look at question 15. Question 15 is a basketball being thrown into the net. And the question asks for the gain in gravitational potential energy. Now, there is a difference, a slight difference, uh, whether the question is asking you to calculate GPE or whether they ask you to calculate, like in this case, the gain in GPE. If they ask you to calculate gravitational potential energy. So let me just write it here. So for example, if a question asks you to calculate GPE of an object, then you just take the mass multiplied by gravitational field strength multiplied by the height of the object. How high is the object at that point of time? So if the object is 2 meters above the ground, then I multiply by 2. 3 meters above the ground, I multiply by 3. But in this case, the question asks you to calculate the gain in GPE. Now, the formula will still be the same mgh, but in this case, the h is going to be the gain in height. That means how much higher has the object become. So I'm not interested in what is the original height. I'm interested in what is the increase in the height. So the ball was originally at point A, that's 1.5 meters. And then it went to point F, which is 1.7 uh, meters, right? So the, the gain will be 1.7 minus 1.5. So this is the increase in the height, and it leads to an increase in gravitational potential energy. So that's how I get 3 joules as the answer, right? But of course, uh, what some students would do is they calculate the GPE at A, then they calculate the GPE at F and then they subtract, which is fine. You will still get the same answer, just a little bit more work. Um, at which point of the path does the ball possess the largest uh, GPE? So again, remember the formula MGH. So as the ball is moving, the mass will not move. Uh, G remains the same as long as you're on Earth. So the highest GPE will be the point where it is furthest away from the ground, the highest point. So in this case, you can see that the highest point is actually 2 meters. So that's D. Okay, so point D. And which point does it have the least uh, GPE? Then again, I will look for the point which is uh, closest to the ground. And in this case, it will be point A. Let's uh, carry on to question uh, 16. Now, question 16 is a question where they show you uh, a pendulum that is uh, spinning. And in this case, the, the pendulum swings from A from uh, A to B to C to D and then back again, right? And the question asks for the energy conversion from A to C, okay? From A to C. So the, the pendulum shift this way. Now, I want you to know that when you move from A to C, it is actually moving closer to the ground, right? So the position gets lower and lower. 
So from, sorry, from A to C, from A to C, uh, okay, maybe I'll write it here. From A to C, your GPE actually decreases because uh, you will decrease your gravitational potential energy when your object is coming nearer to the ground. So GPE decreases. Now, every time you drop something, whether you just dropped it or you allow it to swing like this, each time you go downwards, it will start to move faster and faster. And when it moves faster and faster, the Ke increases, right? So your GPE becomes smaller and smaller while your Ke becomes bigger and bigger. So how does this uh, Ke able to, why is the Ke able to increase? Because it's converted from GPE. So the conversion is from GPE to Ke. And the opposite is going to happen when the pendulum moves from A to, uh, sorry, from C to E. Again, I want you to see that this pendulum is actually moving upwards. So it's moving higher and higher. So anytime an object moves higher and higher, the GPE will increase because the GPE depends on the height. And as we all know, when you throw something upwards, it will actually start to slow down. In fact, it slows down until it reaches the, the highest point. And at this point, actually, it kind of stops for a little while and then it swings backwards. So it slows down until zero. So in this case, the Ke actually slows down. So therefore, um, your conversion is from Ke to GPE. All right. Part B, so where do you get the maximum kinetic energy? Um, this part in red, you can actually pause the video and read it on your own if you need uh, to, to process this whole understanding. Uh, if not, I will just verbally explain to you. Now, for maximum kinetic energy, again, remember the formula for kinetic energy is half mv squared. So therefore, if you want the maximum kinetic energy, you have to look at the movement. Which point is it moving the fastest? So when the pendulum moves down this way, it moves faster and faster and faster and faster. This point is the fastest. Then it starts to slow down again, right? So C is the point where it moves the fastest. So therefore, the maximum kinetic energy is at position C. Then the question asks, which point uh, does it have the greatest GPE? Again, let's write out the formula for GPE is MGH. So the higher the height, the larger the height, the larger the GPE. So I'm, again, I'm going to look at this whole uh, movement now. So the highest point seems to me like it's A. Okay, so therefore position A has the maximum GPE. Right, so we have come to the end of uh, energy part one. You can watch the next video for the answers for energy part two. Happy learning!